In this video, I'm gonna be showing you a couple of Adobe Lightroom presets that I designed myself specifically to work well with Fujifilm digital files. And then if you like them and you're interested, you can just download them for free. So basically I've been a little bit bored recently to say the least, as I'm sure many of you guys have as well. So I've been playing around with a few of my old digital files. I shoot Fujifilm for all my digital work and have done for a fair few years now. And I kind of started working on a couple of presets um, that work specifically with Fujifilm digital files. Now the reason that they work well with Fujifilm digital files is because they're actually built around the inbuilt camera custom profiles. So it's not just having that applied, but I've then gone in and I've done a bunch of tweaks you know not just to the basic panel but to like the split toning and all sorts like that to get it to a specific look that I had in mind. Two of the presets a uh, color one and a black and white I've actually been using for the past like two years now and they've been really tweaked over time to get it to a point that I'm happy with and I use it for the vast majority of my wedding photography work and also the vast majority of my own sort of like family documentary work as well. I was kind of debating the idea of possibly selling them and you know maybe putting them on my website for cheap and just selling them for like 10 pounds or something like that but then I thought you know what screw it I'll just give them away for free so rather than just showing the presets and how they work on my own files I thought I'd reach out to a few other Fuji photographers and see how they look on other people's files as well so I put a uh, story on my Instagram just saying any Fuji shooters would you mind sending me some raw files um, so I can test out some presets on them and luckily I had a ton of people get back to me so I really appreciate everyone who sent me some files thank Thank you. What we're going to do is jump into Lightroom now. I'm going to show you what the presets look like on everyone else's files. I'll give them a shout out as we go and I'll also link all of their Instagram profiles in the description. So if you're interested, definitely check them out and give them a follow. So I've got 15 digital files here, all sent to me from a varied range of photographers, you know, from a varied range of locations and stuff around the world. And I think we've got quite a nice mix just so you can kind of see what these presets actually achieve. Obviously I've had loads and loads of people send me photos and if I don't use your photo, apologies, obviously I really do appreciate you sending me some photos. And I'll tell you what, I will link everybody who sent me photos in the description. So do please feel free to check them all out. They're all great photographers. I just I didn't want to spend ages going through everyone's photos so I just kind of picked 15 that I thought looked really good with the presets. So they're called Fujifilm film look presets and that's basically because they are based around specific film looks and I'll explain that now and I'll go through them one by one. So black and white one box speed is basically based around Ilford HP5 shot at box speed and you'll see over on the right the profiles all of these are built around the inbuilt camera profiles so you want to be shooting raw instead of JPEG come in and load in your uh, your digital files into Lightroom and then edit them with these presets so make sure you're shooting raw black and white 2 pushed is based around Codex Tri-X pushed one stop so it's essentially the look that you would get if you were shooting Kodak Tri-X and you rated it at 800 and pushed it a stop in development and that's got the uh, camera monochrome plus G filter applied to it. Color 1 negative is based around just sort of a standard uh, negative color film look so I'd say it's kind of like a mix between Fujifilm 400H and Kodak Portra 400. So it's not a specific film stock, but just kind of that vibe that you would get from color negative film. Color 2 positive is based around a kind of look that you would get from shooting positive slide film. Again, not any sort of film in particular, um, but just like, the kind of look that I think it would get from positive slide film. I've only shot a bit myself in the past, but I looked at loads of sample photos online and stuff, trying to get all the colors and tones to match up. And then again, same with color free. Color free is expired film look. So it's like a negative film, but expired. So maybe gone off by like 20 years or something like that. I've only shot a couple of expired rolls myself again, but I did a lot of research looking online, looking like the little, um, tone changes that you get in the highlights and the shadows so you can see all these color ones have inbuilt custom camera profiles from Fujifilm so color one is Provia standard, color two is classic chrome and color three is a uh, Pro Neg standard. 
But if you go down, I've then put the profile on and then I've done a ton of edits, you know, not just the basic panel, but the tone curves to the colors. For this one example, I've got some yellow in the um, shadows and some blue in the highlights and stuff like that. And that's what gives you that sort of look of expired film, the way I've edited it to actually look like that. And then obviously I've included some tools on the side. So you've got 35 millimeter grain, 120 grain or medium format grain, add a vignette, lens correction or reset all. So it's just like a nice sort of layout of presets, two black and white, free color. And I think, you know, if you're a wedding photographer, a family photographer, a documentary photographer, there's something for everyone here. And I think personally they work really well and I'm happy with how they turned out. So we're just gonna quickly go through all these photos. I'm gonna edit them how I would with these presets just so you can kind of see the look that you're able to achieve. So this photo is from uh, Chris Andrews, who is a great wedding photographer, great documentary photographer. Um, he shoots a lot of his own family, loads of shots of his cat as well, which uh, if you like cat photos, definitely check out Chris Andrews. So I would edit this being a wedding photo with just like a color negative film look. So I put that on and then once you apply the preset, you would only need to adjust the exposure and the uh, temp and tint so I'd probably warm that up a little bit somewhere around there and I'd probably be quite happy with that to be honest with you I might crop it a bit um, but like editing wise it should just be that simple apply the preset change your exposure and your temp and tint contrast for most of these I've left zeroed out because I think things like contrast, exposure, temp and tint are all subjective, art is subjective, photography is very subjective and it's down to kind of you and your specific look. So apply the preset, change your exposure, temp and tint and you might want to add more or less contrast depending on the kind of look that you want. But something like that is what I would edit that photo with. So next photo we have got uh, this uh, music performer, I forget his name, sorry Murray, but my good friend Murray McMillan, uh, he is again a wedding photographer and he shoots a lot of his own family documentary stuff but he also goes to a lot of gigs um, and he's got some great gig photos, so definitely check out his Instagram. So with this one uh, I would either edit it with a black and white or I quite like that red vibe from the red lights so that's colour negative, that's colour positive, that's expired. For something like this I might even go for the expired look because it gives a lot more grain to it um, and it just makes it look pretty cool in my opinion. I might actually drop the yellow and the pink a bit. So that's original, that's edited. Somewhere along those lines um, I quite like that expired look with the extra grain and stuff like that included. Next photo is by uh, Mr. Grant Michael himself. Grant, again, I think he shoots a lot of weddings, a lot of family documentary stuff, and he does some commercial work, which I think where this uh, photo in particular is from. So <clears throat> what you see now on the Fujifilm look presets, this is what I wanted to talk about. With the inbuilt um, camera profiles, depending on whether you're shooting an older version of the software or an older version of uh, Fujifilm cameras, depends on whether the profile over here is version one or version two. So I've included this set of version one presets as well. Um, or basically what you could do is apply the preset and if it's grayed out like this with not the profile, come over to the profile, click here, choose the right profile, that will update it. And then you can come over, right click, update with current settings and that will just update them all to work more specifically with whatever version of software or camera that you are using. Um, but I've also included this version 1 pack so if you are using the older software you can download them both and just use the version 1 instead of version 2. So for this one uh, that's black and white, colour negative, colour positive and expired. I quite like the vibe of expired film on this again actually. I think it gives it quite a cool look. Um, I would only with this maybe drop the highlights a tiny bit more, increase the exposure, and I'd be quite happy with that as it is in all honesty. This one is a portrait uh, of a model I'm assuming uh, by Thomas Johnston. Um, he again is a really good photographer. I think he shoots a lot of portraits and documentary stuff. So <clears throat> over here we've got box speed, HP5 look, trix pushed, color negative, positive, and expired. I'd probably just put color negative on there, and to be honest with you, maybe warm it up a smidge. And that's kind of good to go, in my opinion. I might do some retouching on the skin and stuff like that, but 
in terms of color and editing, I'm quite happy with that one. Here we have a photo of what looks like a food van or food stall uh, by Alberto Barbieri. I hope I said that right, Alberto. He again is sort of a documentary street photographer. Um, so if we look at this one, I would go for a color look just because of that nice red on the van. That is color negative, color positive and expired. For this one I actually quite like the positive slide film look. Uh, I maybe bring up the shadows a little bit more, but something like that, maybe with a bit more warmth. That looks good to me. Next up, we've got a nice studio portrait, and this is from RDB Visuals. Uh, he is predominantly a portrait photographer, uh, or from what I can tell from his Instagram, and he has some amazing film portraits as well as digital on there. So if you are, you know, interested in looking at really, really good portraits, definitely check out this guy and definitely give him a follow. That's a uh, black and white box speed HP5, tri X pushed, which I quite like. I may just leave it in black and white, increase the exposure a little bit. Maybe do some lens correction to bring out that vignette. That's color one, negative, positive, and expired. And in my opinion, they all look great on this photo. It's just depending on your specific vibe or you know what you want to go for, but I think expired looks quite cool. I might do lens correction, might warm it up a little bit. Somewhere around there, I think that looks good. Now I've got a shot of what could possibly be a petrol station or something with this pickup truck in there. So if we have a little look at the colors, see what they do to these colors of the van and the building, that is color negative film to more like a portrait look uh, or Fuji 400H. That is a slide film positive look and that's expired. I'd probably just chuck that slide film look on it. Lens correction. I think that really makes those reds and orange colors sort of pop out. Next up, we've got this show, uh, shot from a ferry by uh, Vincent Perry himself, Mr. Vincent Perry Jr., who is an amazing photographer, shoots both film and digital, and he's got some killer, killer work, so definitely check him out if you don't follow him already. On this one, I can see that obviously Vince has got all his software up to date, which is great. Makes it easier for these presets to work. So I'd go color. That's color negative, color positive, and that's expired. I'm thinking either positive or expired for this one, but I like the softness that the expired preset brings. So I'd probably just increase the exposure a bit with that one. Maybe warm it up a smidge. Something like that. But to be honest with you, the more I look at this photo, the more I think it actually looks like a like an Edward Hopper painting or something like that. Like that's actually a really good photo, tells a story, and I think that preset really looks good on it. Right, so next up we've got this portrait of a lovely young lady by Liva Marija, uh, who is a great portrait photographer and I think she shoots weddings as well. So if we go down here, we'll stick with color so we can bring out these nice reds and blues and stuff. That is color negative. So that one would look good if you just then increase the uh, warmth a bit onto it. That's color positive and that's color expired. I think positive film looks quite good on that one. Maybe increase the warmth a little bit. Bring down the exposure a tad. Somewhere around that. I think that looks really good. The colors really look good and the red really pops in the background like you would get with a positive slide film. Now we've got this uh, beautiful sort of beach scene uh, around sunset or blue hour. So for this one, we'll go color of course. That's color negative, color positive expired. Might just go for negative film on here and then fix the white balance, get it to a point that I'm happy with. Nice and clean, looks like it could have been shot with film. Might even go for positive instead actually, see what that looks like. I think that looks really good as well. Lens correction. That looks good. Those waves are very blurry and soft and stuff. What was that shot at? One twelfth of a second. Nice. That photo was by, uh, sorry, Rukul Hino, or Rusiul Hino. But I'll link everyone's um, Instagrams in the description. Here we've got a nice shot of a baby crying. Um, oh, this is from Chris Andrews as well. So Chris, you get two, well done mate. Um, so that's color negative. I think this is your baby, isn't it Chris? Congratulations, by the way, if I haven't said so. Uh, color negative, looks like that. Color positive, 
color expired. That is HP5, that is Tri-X pushed. So I quite like Tri-X pushed on that, but to be honest with you, I'd probably just stick with normal negative color film. Increase the exposure a bit. Oh, don't delete. That is good. A couple more. So this is a shot by uh, my online friend, Mr. TJ. I don't want to say a, your name TJ because I'm going to, I will give it a go. Ludek, TJ Ludek, TJ Ludek, Ludeki. You'll have to let me know how to say that. So uh, yeah, TJ, again, great photographer, shoots a lot of film. I think a lot of people that shoot Fuji files often shoot film as well. And I think they probably shot film and they ended up going for Fuji film like myself just because they've got that sort of film aesthetic to the cameras. It almost feels like you're shooting a film camera and they're great fun to shoot with. So this is, that's HP5, Tri-X pushed, color negative, color positive, color expired. For something like this, I'd probably go for a positive slide film look. I would then get my white balance to a point where I was happy with, somewhere there, and I would maybe add a bit more dehaze just to bring some of that back in the sky, drop the highlights a bit. That's raw, that's edited. Lovely jubbly. We've got another wedding photo here uh, around sunset time. This is by Daniel Gonta. Um, I would probably just go for a colour negative look around that time of day. Oh, the positive actually looks quite nice. Positive slide film. Get the exposure where you want it. You might bring down some of that yellow. Oh no, bring up yellow, down pink. Somewhere around there. You'd obviously feel it around with it a little bit more, but you know, as a base point, these presets with the built-in profiles, I think, are a good starting point for anyone shooting a Fujifilm. Uh, this is a late entry. This came literally 10 minutes before I started filming this film. This is by uh, Coco Butter Shutter, and he's a great sort of documentary photographer. Uh, does a lot of street stuff. Um, for something like this, I would probably just go like black and white, Tri-X pushed. I think that looks good. That's color negative though, just so you're aware. That's color positive and that is expired. But yeah, for me, I'd probably stick with black and white. And then last but not least, we've got this awesome portrait uh, by Joe. Joe is a predominantly a portrait photographer. I think he takes a lot of inspiration from people like Peter Lindbergh and stuff like that. You can tell from like the, the slant and stuff that he shoots his photos at to give you that sort of feeling of uneasiness and whatnot. I think really good photographer. So that is box speed, HP5, Tri-X pushed, color negative, color positive, and expired. I'd probably go color positive on that get my white balance to kind of where I want it to be. A bit more pink, somewhere like that. And that one I might add a bit more dehaze or contrast. And that looks great. So those are the presets. Like I say, there's a two black and white, three color. They're all built around Fuji's own inbuilt custom profiles. So although I shoot um, JPEG sometimes with my Fuji cameras, especially if I'm shooting black and white, I'll just shoot like Acros plus the green filter or something like that. I do think often you'll get much more out of a digital file if you shoot RAW and then edit them in Lightroom. So that's what I've tried to achieve with these presets. You must shoot RAW if you're gonna use them and then they will apply the inbuilt custom profiles with all the tweaks that I've made on top of that within Lightroom. So yeah, if you like them, you like what you see and you wanna play around with them, you can download them for free. The link is here, there's a Dropbox link in the description below along with everyone else's Instagram profiles. Please make sure you give them a follow as well as download the presets if you want um, I don't expect anything in return obviously they're completely free of charge maybe if you don't already subscribe to my channel give me a little subscribe if you don't follow me on Instagram give me a follow if you do already follow me on um, YouTube and maybe you haven't seen all my videos maybe just watch a couple of my old videos or something like that um, because I've got ad revenue now so I might get 10p out of it but it'd be great if you do um, but if not yeah just download enjoy make sure if you are sharing them or you do enjoy the presets 
that you do uh, either tag me on Instagram or just share them with your fellow Fuji shooters because you know if you enjoy them what's to say someone else isn't going to enjoy them as well so make sure you do tell your other Fuji friends and um, yeah hopefully you guys like them but I'd love to know your opinions on them so please feel free to comment below send me a message on Instagram let me know what you think do you like them do you hate them uh, anything you think that I could maybe change about them to make them better I'd love to hear from you uh, but that's it for now I hope you enjoy thanks for watching and um, yeah hopefully I'll see you in the next video